latest study is one of the largest ever done on mammography, following nearly 90,000 women in Canada for 25 years. It found that there was no difference in the rate of death from breast cancer between women who got yearly mammograms and those who did not. What's more, researchers found that 22 percent of the cancers found were overdiagnosed, meaning they wouldn't have shortened patients' lives if left untreated. All right, folks, welcome back to the Steve Molesberg Show. Uh, another day, another story, and another possible change in what uh, recommendations are regarding breast cancer in this case. Joining us right now to talk about all this is our good friend, Dr. David Samadhi, Chairman of uh, Urology and Chief of Robotics surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital here in New York City, and you watch them 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Sundays on uh, House Calls on the Fox News Channel. Hello, Dr. Samadhi. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm all right. So, you know, immediately I think of you when I, when I hear a, a, a news report like this. That was NBC News. Uh, and basically what this report is suggesting is that mammograms – not that they shouldn't start at 40, but should start at 50. Not that they shouldn't be every year, but every other year, as we've already heard. But that, really, they shouldn't be done at all. Well, what they're saying is that there is some false positive as a result of doing mammograms every year. And you're going to find lesions that may be cancerous, but they may not kill you. And these are slow-growing breast cancers. And as a result, the doctors may go ahead and take... Uh, the breast out and do mastectomies and this patient would have been fine even if he had like a very slow growing breast cancer that's really bottom line and maybe it's the side effects of finding these cancers outweighs the benefit if it's not going to kill them they're also saying that if you get the mammogram every other year in the long term it doesn't have a major survival benefit compared to the ones that went ahead and got the annual mammograms what the issue here is that whether it's in Canada or in Europe, the, the cost is a huge part of this problem. And by doing this mammogram every year, you're adding about $7 billion to the cost of healthcare. That may be uh, a big number for us, but I don't know what the price of one of these uh, jet uh, flight uh, that drops in, in uh, Iraq or in Kuwait is, but certainly I think, you know, the big message for a lot of people is that not every mammogram needs biopsy, not every biopsy needs mastectomy or radiation. I think we need to do screening. We need to make sure also that it's a very tailored and personalized way of doing the screening. Somebody that would come into the office in my field, which is prostate cancer, very similar to breast cancer, if, if I know that they have family history of prostate cancer, if I know that their PSA is high, same thing with breast. If they have genetic markers for breast cancer, family members, we need to be more aggressive. Somebody who has absolutely no family members and they are not at risk and they do self-examination, we may want to go to every other year knowing that if you find something, come back again. So there is no one-size-fits-all kind of therapy. These are interesting and it's a good study. But I would advise people to go ahead and get the mammogram. But always, if you find something on mammogram, get second and third opinion. Right, right, right. What is a, is a grandmother uh, considered a, a family a history, or does it have to be an immediate? Like, does it have to be a mother? No, it's mom, aunt, and grandmother. Yeah, okay. Just wanted to know that. That's good to know. All right, so happy Valentine's Day uh, to you, doctor. And um, you. I have a story here that says being in love uh, and being in a relationship uh, is good for your heart. <laughs> you know, this study is very interesting, and it always comes around this time of the year. Um, well, we, so a lot of it is we know, because with marriage comes a lot of stability, meaning that, you know, you don't have the anxiety of being out there in all these clubs and uh, nightlife, staying up all night, drinking alcohol, smoking, dealing with marijuana. Being married, um, you know, it's a wonderful thing if you're with the right person, and also it brings a lot of stability. You, you, the anxiety is less. You get to sleep more. You, you have better sex life, supposedly, and on and on. And all of that are factors that will help with your healthy life. So uh, good marriage means good heart. 
and healthy life. Yeah, all right, and I got one more. You know, some people think the more exercise you do, even if you're in good health, uh, the better it is or the more strenuous, the better it is. Now comes a study that moderate exercise, uh, like uh, power walking or golf or volleyball, uh, may be better for reducing stroke risk, at least in women, uh, compared to uh, more strenuous exercise. Why would more moderate exercise be better than the strenuous exercise when it comes to stroke? The problem with strenuous exercise is that you put tremendous amount of pressure on your joints and your bones and you cause a future arthritis and you cause a small fracture in the bones and it's never good. And that's the misnomer that people always think like if I do more, it's better. Moderate exercise is tolerable. You can do it three times a week. In this particular study, if you do somewhere around like three hours a week, you reduce the risk of stroke. By lowering your blood pressure, by lowering your cholesterol, by lowering chance of diabetes, which are all the risk factors for stroke, you actually add to your life. So I agree with that. I think that you want to do on Mondays, you want to take Tuesdays off so your body can heal, and you go back on, on exercise on Wednesdays. And half an hour to an hour is more than enough. You really don't want to pound those knees and shoulders and joints and end up causing more problem in the future. Yeah, I mean, I do the treadmill three hopefully four times a week and it's for 45 50 minutes and it's uh Perfect. you know and then and they wind up doing about two and a half to three miles so it's uh you know i do what i could do hey doc always great That's to talk perfect. to you happy valentine's day again Thank and we'll speak friend. to you next week we'll watch you Dr. Samadhi on Sunday, of course, on uh, House Calls on the Fox News Channel. Dr. Samadhi is chairman of urology and chief of robotic surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital. All right, very uh, interesting. When we come back in the, uh, in the next hour of the show, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be joined by our panel of uh, uh, John Fund and Ron Christie. Also, Walter E. Williams, the great columnist, uh, syndicated columnist and economist will join us. Uh, we have a lot to talk about with him. And uh, we're also going to, uh, at the beginning of the hour, John Stewart took the Obama administration to task for the way they have uh, picked recently their uh, ambassadors, the nominees to be ambassadors to various countries. You're going to want to see this. You're not going to want to miss it. It's coming right up at the top of the hour right here on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television. The